Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today's August 27th. I've been away for a lot of August. I haven't been taking care of my plants as I should. This is my kale bed and what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it up. Kale is a plant that can take the cold, it can take a frost, the root systems can take freezes. I'm in Maryland Zone 7 so if the a freeze doesn't get down too deep your plant will survive. But let me show you what's going on with this kale plant and talk about what I'm going to fix. You can see a lot of holes in there. I haven't been putting down my iron phosphate because I've been away. Snails and slugs probably moved in. A lot of the holes are probably from caterpillars. So I'm going to clean that up. If you look under here, you can see the chewing caterpillar right there. Over here by my thumb, those are all white flies. So what I'm going to do is wash this down with a hose first, rinse off all the soft bodied insects. Then I'm going to spray a soapy water under the leaves because kale leaves are very strong so they can take a stronger soapy solution. Always test any new sprays that you make. Then I'm going to hit it with some neem oil, put down some iron phosphate and really clean all that out. And come mid-September, I'm going to show you the progress. These will be thriving, lots of leafy greens. I'm also going to feed it with a fish emulsion because my goal is really just to get nitrogen to these and fish emulsion is a great organic way to get nitrogen to your plants. But come late, I guess summer in your areas, if plants are a little beat up by heat or you get behind, don't throw your kale out. Because if these can survive here in Maryland Zone 7, like I said, if a hard freeze doesn't come and kill out the root system, come spring they're going to have tons of tiny leaves which are really sweet and enjoyable and you're going to have blooms and flowers that you can eat and you're going to have hundreds of them so it's another way that you can really enjoy your kale plant so let me get to cleaning this up and show you what i'm going to do so i got in there and i cleaned out a lot of the leaves some of the leaves the holes in there i left but i don't know if you can see them but you, yeah there you go you can see the white flies going but all the way down to the bottom took out all the yellowing leaves all the leaves that fell on the ground all the way across and you can see all the white flies popping around. Pulled back the asparagus. And the first thing you want to do, white flies are soft bodied insects. Just spray the whole plant down. Rain doesn't normally get under there. So the white flies are protected. So get the water in and just really wash everything down. So I'm going to do that for all the plants and then I'm going to come back with the uh, soapy water spray and the neem oil. You can mix those two together as long as you use them, you know, in the same day. That's going to be next. So I've soaked the leaves down and you can see there's a lot less of the white flies moving around now. There's a couple still moving around. Because the white flies are on the underside of the leaves, they don't really get wet. So when you soak them with the hose, they're fragile. The water soaks them, they fall to the ground and some of them won't be able to get back up here. But there's a lot of white cotton-like marks on here. They lay eggs and stuff like that. So you need to spray them now with the soapy water. In my container, one gallon, I have uh, soapy water and neem oil. I put in about a tablespoon and a half of the neem oil. I recommend one tablespoon to two tablespoons, depending on what you're spraying. And then you put in just enough soap that when you shake it, the oil gets dispersed through the water. And I can't tell you exactly how much soap to use because everybody has different soaps. But if you subscribe to my channel and you look up soap, you'll find a way that I show you how to put in the right amount of soap. Too much soap could damage plants. Like I said, kale is a really heavy leaf, so it can take a little bit more soap. So first thing, I'm going to soak the tops down. The neem oil the soapy water will take care of the white flies. The oil will actually coat their, their wings and cause problems. The neem oil is also coating the leaves and as a direct and when ingested by the caterpillars, will kill them off in a couple of days. The next thing you want to do is make sure you really spray the inside or the undersides of the leaves. And I'm going to do that for the rest of them, and that will really set up everything. After you spray them, today you want to do this every three days for two more trials. So over a nine day period, you're going to spray this down with neem oil and soapy water, and that will take care of any hatching eggs and kill out the life, style, life um, cycles of these insects. So I'm going to get back to the feeding. 
All right, and again, I just want to stress it's important that when you're treating something for insects or disease, you want to do it about every three days over a, th over a nine day period. So you're going to do it three times. And that's just to kill the life cycles out of the bugs or the diseases. Now, what I'm putting in here is fish emulsion. It's an organic fertilizer, and I use both. I use organic products, and I use products that are called chemical fertilizers or fertilizers made by people or processed with you know something that we do to them. Fish fertilizer is great. There is a concern that sometimes the fish could have heavy metals, but that's something for you to look up, to look up and learn about. I'm going to quickly hit the leaves. I don't want to put too much on there because I don't want to wash up the neem oil or anything. But I'm just going to soak in the ground with one gallon of water. This is a 4x4 four four plot, so it's 16 feet. And the ratio is one tablespoon of fish fertilizer per gallon of water in a 25 foot square space. So this is a little bit more than it recommends, but that's perfectly fine. And I just want to make sure I'm getting it down to the root systems of each plant. And then the final thing I'm going to put down here is iron um, phosphate right into the bottom. Just sprinkle it in. That's to kill out any snails or slugs. The slugs will eat that. It will actually shut down their stomachs. They won't feed and they're going to die out. Now, I'm going to do a follow-up video instead of waiting to post the second half to this so that I can get this out to you and maybe you can use it now in your gardens, but I will do a follow-up. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my blog at www.therusticgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.